There are some very important tools in this window and we're going to quickly look around them now. We'll look at all of them in detail later. In the centre of the page is the document window containing the active document, the one we're working on. If you've been using Word 2007 before, you'll wonder where the Office button is. Well, it's still here, but it's had a makeover. Click File in the corner. Click File again to close it. The status bar displays information about the active document. There's not much to say about it at the moment. It's got no words. The ribbon contains commands and tools grouped by category into tabs. At the bottom right we have the zoom controls. These are really useful for zooming in or out to get a better view of our document. Just to the left of the zoom controls are the view buttons. We can switch between the different ways of looking at our document. We also have a little toolbar in the top left of the workspace that's called the Quick Access Toolbar. This can be customised to our own requirements. When we're using Word we often need some extra help to do a job. Word is great at providing that help. For some tasks it provides a task pane. For example, if we want to work with styles in our document we can choose the Styles Task Pane Launcher. As we'll see later, this task pane gives us access to many tools we can use in our work. One of the great things about task plane, panes is that you can move them around the workspace and put them somewhere convenient. Click on the header until a four-headed arrow appears, then use the left mouse button to drag the pane around. Let go wherever you want to, although that's probably not a good place to leave it. I'll move it again. Then close it using the cross in the top right hand corner. You can also resize a task pane. Just hover over one edge until you see a two headed arrow. Left click and move the edge to make the pane larger or smaller. It's easy with a little practice. We've been looking at the word workspace. Now we're going to start looking at a document. There are a few ways of opening an existing document. One we'll use a lot is to reopen a document we've worked on recently. And that's what we're going to do now. We use the File button to access Backstage View. This is one of the features that was introduced in Word 2010. Let's look at the main options. We'll cover many of them in detail later. Backstage view is where we save, open and close files. It also provides information about the file that's currently open. This includes information about other users access permissions and version history and some properties of the file such as the number of pages and the number of words in the document. Backstage view gives us access to the print facilities such as choice of printer and the size of paper that we need to use. Backstage view gives us another way into Word's help facilities. And finally Backstage View provides access to the Word Options dialog where the facilities include proofing including spell checking and grammar checking, language settings, facilities to customize the ribbon 
and, as we've already seen, to customize the quick access toolbar. This is how PowerPoint will look when you first open it up. I have a blank presentation with a single slide. Let's go ahead and look at the interface and then we'll talk about how to deal with a presentation. First of all, across the top of my screen, I have tabs. Each of these tabs corresponds with functions on the ribbon. I am currently in the Home tab, and I have a basic set of functions that will guide me through many of the different things I need inside of PowerPoint. You'll notice that I have Cut, Copy, and Paste features. I can also add a new slide or adjust the layout of an existing slide. All of my font formatting options are here as well. And down the way, I have paragraph, drawing, and editing functions in addition. In the lower right-hand corner of several of these regions is what's called a dialog box launcher. Dialog box launchers lead to greater functionality. If I click where it says click to add a title, now I can click here and access my dialog box. Inside the dialog boxes are greater levels of functionality. New for Office 2010 is the File tab. On the File tab, you can access recently opened or created presentations, save presentations, open presentations, and close presentations. You can also print from here, save and send, and find help. We're going to cover many of these features in other sessions. Also, at the bottom, we have options and exit. If I click on options, I can see I get a set of options for how PowerPoint will work. There are categories down the left hand side and the functions are grouped logically. PowerPoint has several different views. I am currently in the normal view. To access other views, I can either go to the view tab and I can see normal, slide sorter, notes, and reading view. Or I also have buttons in the lower right hand corner of my screen. On the left hand side of my screen, I have a thumbnail pane that will show me thumbnails of all of the different slides I have. As I type, it does fill in. In other words, what you see is a real-time thumbnail of your actual slides. As we add items or view items, we will get what are called contextual tabs. Because this main box where I'm putting this title is effectively a text box, I can come up and click on the Format tab and get drawing tools for dealing with this text box. Let's go ahead and open an existing presentation and show you how to run a slideshow. I'm first going to go to my File tab, go down to Recent, and I'm going to open up Natural Escape Resort and Spa. This is what a presentation will look like inside of PowerPoint. Notice I have in my thumbnail pane down the left hand side all of my slides. I can simply click and go to any slide I'd like. When you're ready to run a slideshow, Simply go to the Slideshow tab, and the first button is From Beginning. Click From Beginning, and your slideshow will begin. Simply click through, or use the arrow keys on your keyboard to advance the slides. When you're done, you can either hit the escape key or go all the way to the end of the presentation. I'm going to hit the escape key. And now I'm back in regular edit mode. If you want to make any changes to your presentation, simply come over and click on the tab where that function will reside. Once again, they're very logically grouped. If you want to add an animation to an individual element on the screen, 
Simply click on the element and go to the Animations tab. If you want to change transitions from one slide to another, go to the Transitions tab. And if you're looking to insert a particular item into your presentation, most likely it's on the Insert tab. And that's your introduction to PowerPoint 2010. When you open Microsoft Excel 2010, the first thing you'll notice if you were a user of Excel 2003 is that the user interface has changed quite a bit. Instead of a menus and toolbars system, which was used in 2003, Excel 2010 uses the ribbon. The ribbon is divided into tabs. So for example, you have the Home tab, which contains the most used functions. Those include cutting, copying, pasting, most formatting, for example, changing fonts, changing font size, bold, italic, and so on. The Insert tab of the ribbon allows you to insert pictures, shapes, smart art, and so on. And the other tabs offer capabilities that are reflected by the name of the tab on the ribbon. Controls on a ribbon are divided into groups, and those groups are delineated by these vertical lines. So for example, to the left of this line, we have the tables group, and between this line and this line, we have the illustrations group, and so on. To switch to another tab on the ribbon, you click that tab, and then you might have noticed that at the bottom right corner of some of the ribbon groups, not all of them, but some of them, there is a little button, and that button is called a Dialog Expander. So for example, if you were to click the Dialog Expander of the font group, you would display the Format Cells dialog box. And you can use the controls there to format fonts, change numbers, and so on. To close the dialog box, you just click Cancel, or you could click the Close box at the top right corner. The last aspect of the ribbon that I'd like to discuss is what's called Backstage View. Backstage View is new in Excel 2010, and if you use Excel 2007, you probably remember that there was the Microsoft Office button located at the top left of the Excel program window. The Microsoft Office button has been replaced by the File tab, and if you click the File tab, you'll see that you're able to save files, save them under new names using Save As, close the existing file, display all the recent files um, that you have opened, uh, print, and do things such as display the Excel Options dialog box that allows you to change which errors are displayed, the default font, the number of worksheets that are created when you create a new workbook, and so on. If you're in Backstage View and you want to get out, all you need to do is click another tab on the ribbon. The name of your workbook appears here on the title bar. It displays, for example, the name of this file driver, Sort Times, and Microsoft Excel, which is the format of the workbook.